At a time when speaking events on college campuses can quickly become controversial and even make them national news, hundreds of professors, administrators, and graduate students are collaborating to improve dialogue on college campuses. They're members of the Heterodox Academy, a nonpartisan organization with a focus on promoting diversity, open inquiry, and constructive disagreements. Here to expand on their mission, why it's so important to Heterodox Academy's executive director, Deborah Mashek. She joins us now via Skype. Deborah, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for inviting me. So tell us, you had a conference recently, made a little bit of news. Tell us a little bit about that conference, the organization, and what you guys are all working on right now. Excellent. So as you mentioned, the mission is about improving research and education by increasing open inquiry, viewpoint diversity, and constructive disagreement. And one of the things we do is we try to convene communities of interest. That conference that happened on June 20th and 21st in New York is an example of that. So 430 people came together to think constructively about what can we do in higher ed to make sure a lot of different viewpoints are available and can be spoken, can be, in, you know, different questions can be asked and interrogated by diverse people with diverse perspectives. And uh, two of my favorite sessions from the conference, one, one talked about what is the relationship between viewpoint diversity and other forms of diversity. So there's one narrative out there that says, for instance, like, oh, if you're for viewpoint diversity, you must be against other forms of diversity. And we really see this part as part and parcel, that these are two, two sides of the same coin. Um, so that, that was a very exciting session. And then another, another one interrogated um, who decides which viewpoints are allowed on campus and how are those decisions made. So we, for instance, don't believe that all viewpoints are created equal and that uh, it, what we do believe is that mode of engagement and quality of thought mm -hmm. also matters when we're thinking about our research and our education. Yeah. So when you say all viewpoints are not equal, I mean, are there some viewpoints that are out of bounds for discussion and where do you draw that line? This is the beautiful thing about higher ed, where we know what counts as evidence within our different disciplines. We know how to expose falsehoods and how to interrogate claims. And so when I teach, I, for instance, tell my students, all viewpoints are welcomed, but that also means all viewpoints must uh, or must be uh, subjected to inquiry and critical inquiry, and that we can um, ask questions of all these claims. And so be ready to defend your, your positions, but we're not going to attack each other. I think, I think that really gets to the core of what I see as the biggest problem in higher ed. And we should remember higher education, why this matters is it's educating the literal elite of our country and what, what goes into the minds of these people and what's, what's being allowed to talk and whatnot sets the tone for the rest of the country and how people think about things going into their jobs. How do you deal with the situation in a lot of these campuses when some of these professors, particularly in like sociological departments, hold a position that speech is violence? If that is the position that you start off from, how do you have a viewpoint diverse discussion? Hmm. Yeah, and I'll, I'll actually, you mentioned, yeah. our, you know, these students going out into their jobs, they're also going out to be parents and citizens and policy makers. Right. And it, it's really complex. So the habits of heart and mind that we are um, developing in college, they follow us, they're, they're, they're part of us. Mm -hmm. So then this question of like, what if we see all sp our speech as violence or that if you say something that it's marginalizing my very personhood, first and foremost, campuses need to be places where diverse people with diverse, diverse perspectives can come together to learn. But I think we need to push back on this notion that if I'm uncomfortable, I'm therefore unsafe. There's a conflation out there that, um, it, you know, if you're unsettling me, if you're saying something, you're challenging my worldview, you're, you're thus um, making me unsafe. And as a professor, I am of the opinion that, you know, if I'm not challenging your worldview, if I'm not making you uncomfortable, I'm not doing my job. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I tell my students, if you sit in my classroom for a semester and leave thinking and feeling and doing the same way you did when you came in, you, you just wasted a semester and probably a lot of money too. So these, the protests, the deplatforming incidents, you know, the sort of most visible elements of cancel culture get a lot of coverage and get a lot of attention. But does that actually jive with your experience being a professor on a daily basis? I guess the question I'm really asking is, is that a widespread view and phenomenon or are we talking about a very vocal minority? So thankfully the shout downs and the shutdowns are statistically very rare. They don't happen 
on most campuses. What seems to be more common are the eggshells that exist um, within a classroom and on campus. And we have some great uh, data from national samples. And, and the students are saying, yeah, there, there are questions I am uncomfortable asking. And not because they think the questions are horrible, but they think that um, someone might you might say like, oh, because you asked that very question, you're therefore a racist or misogynist. And so students are choosing to sit on the sidelines of their own learning. They're choosing not to not to ask a question or explore a topic. Um, examples of students saying, you know, what I really wanted to write a paper about was this, but I was worried the professor might be offended. So instead, I, I did this this other angle. And uh -huh. as, a, as a parent, as an educator, what worries me about this is that means students are sitting on the sideline of their own learning. That means they're not, if, if we can't think, if we can't explore ideas, we're not going to learn. But it's also the case that the other students sitting in that classroom next to you, they're not going to learn either because they need, to, ideas need to bump up against each other. Iron sharpens iron. This is what the, the classroom community needs to be about. How do we solve for it, this position, especially when you have professors themselves who are trying to oust professors from their departments who they don't agree with? A lot of this, it can sound minute to a lot of the viewers, but this kind of bureaucratic politics actually matters quite a bit in terms of the curriculum and what the students end up taking away. So how, what, what's your organization looking at in terms of fighting against that type of phenomenon? You're, you're absolutely right. So mm -hmm. hiring decisions, for instance, feed into who's on the faculty. The faculty own the curricula. Um, they they get to decide what are the required courses you take and whatnot. So there are what might feel like small decisions here and there can have can have a big impact. At Heterodox Academy, uh, you know, we advocate for in your in the job descriptions that go out to hire professors, just like we say that we welcome applicants from a range of different backgrounds, a range of different um, demogra demographic backgrounds and educational um, different kinds of institutions, that it would be wonderful if we could also say we welcome people who come at you know their, their questions, uh, their scholarly questions from a range of theoretical perspectives, from a range of ideological perspectives, um, that religious folks are welcome on campus. That's that's another one of those mm -hmm. kind of hidden, hidden demographics. Deb, I think part of the reason why we're seeing this phenomenon now, I mean, I think it's too uh, elevating to tie it directly to Donald Trump's presidency, but there's a sense that ideas which were long banished are coming back, right? There's a sense that racism right. is able to be explored and elevated and given a pseudoscientific basis again and that we're going back to these bad ideas from the past that we really thought we had moved beyond and people are uncomfortable with that so how do you respond to that genuine discomfort yeah and a, a real concern because if, if the goal is to create these campuses and these climates uh, where everyone feels welcome if you have you know, people saying you you don't you're not allowed here. Your type's not allowed here. That's horrible. Um, and it's also the case that if there are people who truly hold those beliefs personally, I, I want to know about it. Um, there, those folks are still going to exist. They're still going to hold the beliefs, even if um, I they're not welcomed. I would rather they come out into the open so that they can be challenged and interrogated with evidence, with logic, with argument, with hearts and minds, as opposed to just saying, well, if, you know, people still exist. There might be someone on the campus who still holds that view, but if they're not expressing it, um, that mm -hmm. I, I guess I, I, I want it to be out in the open so we can tackle it. Gotcha. Final question for you, Deb. What is the organization looking forward and what are the new projects you guys are working on? We've got so many things going on. I can't believe all the opportunities that seem to knock every single week. Um, some of the big ones that are coming up is we are start over the next year, we'll be launching the HXA Distinguished Academies Initiative. And this will be an opportunity to really hold up and celebrate those institutions that are doing great in this space, um, countering a lot of the, as you mentioned, Crystal, a lot of the stories that pop up are when things go wrong. And it's about shaming the institution or embarrassing the professor or the student. And we want to, you know, our goal is to take a much more constructive approach. So find the institutions that are doing great, sing their praises, hold them up as very visible models for other institutions. Hmm. Well, very thank you so much, Deb. We really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Deb. Yeah, my pleasure. Have a great day. You too. You too. 
We'll have more rising for you after this.